Hi friends, in this video, let's talk about how to reverse fatty liver. My top 10 best ways. I had fatty liver as proven on a CT scan that I got because I had appendicitis. It was the best thing that happened to me even though I almost died due to sepsis. I was eating the convenient standard American diet, high in processed fatty and sugary foods because I always ran out of time to cook for myself as a young working doctor trying to homeschool three little kids. Taking care of myself was the very bottom of my priority list. So getting sepsis made me make time for myself and build in these 10 daily habits to reverse fatty liver, like number one, eating cruciferous vegetables daily for breakfast. Now this is the hardest thing for me to do because cruciferous vegetables like kale, they don't taste good, but they are so powerful and they indirectly reverse fatty liver through several mechanisms. Kale have been shown to reduce LDL cholesterol by 20% in non-smoking men. And if you haven't heard, high cholesterol can also contribute to fatty liver. The liver is a very vascular organ that the radiologist or surgeon, they can't put pressure on that to stop bleeding. I personally would never volunteer for a liver biopsy unless my life depended upon it. I've always had great cholesterol levels until my pregnancy when I craved for a Trader Joe's vanilla ice cream every single day. And I believed it was okay since I was pregnant and I had this craving. And besides, eating fat would reduce my sugar spikes and I had gestational diabetes. But the problem is I didn't realize that during the course of pregnancy, cholesterol actually will naturally increase and that eating fat that just delays the inevitable sugar spike because I was eating processed sugar. High fat meals delays gastric emptying, so you don't see the immediate sugar spikes. But if you keep checking, a couple hours later, the sugar surge will still happen as shown in studies with people with type 1 diabetes. Now, I picked a really tough, bitter food to eat. So... I couldn't eat it. And what I did was I just started juicing kale because even kale juice has amazing antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits. And conveniently, I can now just put that through a blender and enjoy it with blueberries as a smoothie, which is number two, eating blueberries daily. Blueberries are particularly good to fight fatty liver for three reasons. It is high in fiber. It doesn't cause the high sugar surges and then the high insulin spikes with the sugar. And it also has a tremendous amount of polyphenols that inhibit digestive enzymes. I was told by several people in the medical field not to eat any fruit when I had gestational diabetes. And so I listened and significantly reduced my fruit intake. They gave me really bad advice. Whole fruit isn't the problem. However, fruity processed foods are a big problem. My mom would only buy cherry ice cream because she thought it was actually healthy because it had some cherries. Now, fruit flavor ice cream is no better than vanilla ice cream, which are all basically sugary, fatty desserts. Actually, it may be a little worse since it has food coloring and then the fruit is sugared up. I ate so much fat and sugar as a child that I was the whitest person in my class and I had two root canals before age 10. Have you ever heard of the phrase, an apple a day will keep the dentist away? Well, not if you are eating gummified candy. My friend gave her daughter gummies every day that had 100% apple juice and she had 14 cavities by four years of age. That is a lot of dental trips. Now, do you see how processed foods with fruit are actually metabolic poisons unintentionally designed to ruin your health? But whole fruit has been my lifesaver and I've always used fruit to help me lose weight and keep my skin healthy as fruits are rich in water, vitamin C, fiber, and low in calories to combat the sugar and fat that I was eating in pastries, cookies, candy bars, bagels. Many studies have shown eating fruits without added sugar helps people lose weight, reduce cholesterol, and improves their insulin sensitivity. And this all equates to reduce fat in the liver. And you may be afraid to eat fruit because your blood sugar will spike. And yes, in the short term, you'll see sugars go up whenever anybody eats fruits, even with people who don't have diabetes. But in the long term, fruits will help improve your metabolism by improving your insulin resistance. And reversing insulin resistance is a key to health and reversing high blood sugars that are sustained over time. This is the key to reversing fatty liver and to reduce cardiovascular inflammation. But avoiding carbohydrates, that may not reverse your insulin resistance, nor your fatty liver, and nor your cardiovascular inflammation. However, if you are truly reversing your insulin resistance, 
you will have lower blood sugars when you eat carbohydrates, have less fat in your liver, and an improved lipid panel. And people who are ignoring these facts are doing it at the expense of health. And the reason is because many people actually focus on the hormone insulin, but they forget about insulin receptors. Insulin is a fat storage hormone and a key driver of fatty liver. The higher the insulin, the worse your fatty liver will get. So reducing excess blood sugars and proteins are both important for improving fatty liver as they both increase insulin production. And you can do this by fasting, going on a ketogenic diet, losing weight, going paleo, going vegetarian, going carnivore, calorie counting, eating only a whole food plant-based diet, exercising a ton, and really any diet that reduces your calories from processed foods. But which lifestyle is actually improving your immunity? And which one can you sustain for life? Now, I see the complications of people who have overlooked their immunity. And I'm only in favor of lifestyles that will feed your immune system the beneficial polyphenols and carbohydrates found in produce like blueberries. Insulin resistance causes persistent high blood sugars. Eventually both feed on each other, revolving like a hamster wheel so everyone is confused. Now we've learned a lot from people with type 1 diabetes who can't produce any insulin. They don't get fatty liver, they don't gain weight, and they don't survive unless they get insulin replaced. Now in fact, if you have untreated type 1 diabetes, you're really dehydrated, you're really skinny, and you're really tired. And without insulin, you can't store fat, and your metabolism is on super speed burning your own body fat. And that's why fasting works, or avoiding carbohydrates, or reducing proteins. They all work because you're losing weight, since they all reduce calories and they lower your insulin levels. Just like removing the low-hanging fruits like soda and chips and desserts, which are high in calories, and reducing the amount of high fat processed animal products like bacon and sausage, you're going to improve your insulin resistance. But you're gonna hit a plateau with your fat weight loss and feel poor energy levels if you don't get to the root cause. Now let's take fasting for an example. The five day eat and two day fast that's recommended by many internet influencers. Now did you know that fasting for two days actually makes you more insulin resistant? So you lose weight by starving, and then when you go back to eating carbohydrates, you spike your insulin higher than you would have if you didn't do that. And then you pack on weight faster. So then you have to do this whole thing over and over again. Now, this study tested people without diabetes. This paper split 23 male medical students to four groups with four diets. Group one got a pretty good high quality, high protein diet with lean meat and egg whites. And group two got a high fat diet with oil and mayonnaise, cream and butter. And group three, they got nothing to eat. They basically fasted for two days. And group four got a high carbohydrate diet after two days of these diets. All four groups were given a sugar challenge called a glucose or dextrose tolerance test. Without a sugar challenge, you don't know if you have insulin resistance. And look at this graph. People who fasted and ate a high fat diet had the highest glucose levels. And surprisingly, people who ate a high carbohydrate diet had the best blood sugars. And this is only two days. This is why the five day on two day fasting plan is a bad idea. You actually don't get more insulin sensitive and you're just losing weight because you're losing water and muscle. Now I am working really hard to keep my muscle mass because it is a greatest metabolic buffer to any diet. And based on this graph, eating high saturated fat or fasting for two days confirms that you're not actually improving your metabolism. Now I'm sure you've heard internet experts tell you the exact opposite. It's really confusing because it doesn't make sense as you're not eating any calories, you should be getting more insulin sensitive. The thing is metabolism is very complex and by changing one parameter, you're changing a whole bunch of other parameters. And when you fast, you're actually releasing stress hormones like epinephrine and norepinephrine that can also affect your insulin and blood sugar levels. And that's maybe one reason why fasting results in higher blood sugars and insulin levels when given a glucose challenge. There are thousands of molecules in your body that get affected whenever you do anything. Just think about how many pieces make your car. A missing screw, bolt, liquid, like gasoline, that can stop your car from driving. And the human body is even more complex, but everyone is always trying to simplify it. And when you stress your body through starvation, because that's what fasting is, there will be side effects. Fasting has been practiced for eons in different religions, but not all religious practices are good for health. Fasting is not a sustainable lifestyle. You have to eventually stop. And if you do it wrong, you can actually permanently damage your body. Now I've met people who have gotten serious illnesses from dieting. 
I see the sickest of the sick, so I have a very low tolerance of lifestyles that destroy people's immune system. The first thing that gets people is dehydration, no matter what activity we're talking about. And with dehydration comes infectious diseases. And then if you're fasting, that means you're not able to eat essential micronutrients. People already have micronutrient deficiencies when they're eating. This is why it's super important to do fasting under the supervision of a medical doctor. When you're fasting, do you know how your body gets its fuel? Initially, it uses glycogen. That's from your muscles and your liver. And that is obtained by breaking down muscle tissue to make glucose. And eventually, you're going to convert to fat energy. And as your insulin goes down during fasting, you release more fat into your bloodstream. High insulin actually stops your body from using your own fat. And this is beneficial, but your metabolism will struggle if you're missing micronutrients. Everyone likes to talk about macronutrients, how much protein, carbs, and fats you eat or break down, but they ignore that the rate limiting step is actually having enough essential micronutrients like thiamine and magnesium that are necessary to convert sugar, protein, and fat into energy. Your body has an abundant supply of macronutrients from your own tissue. The average American is super overweight, but many micronutrients are already missing in the majority of diets of people when they are eating food. And this is why I'm against fasting because people are already deficient in essential micronutrients. Now, the other problem is that insulin can't work without insulin receptors on your cells. And there are insulin receptors on all human cells because all of your cells are competing to get energy. Now, your liver is especially sensitive because it not only needs some energy, but it also needs to control how much blood sugar to release in your body. Your muscles, well, you have much more of them. They're actually the storage depot for excess sugar. The more insulin sensitive you are and the more insulin receptors you have on your muscle tissue to help you absorb the glucose that you eat. Now, muscle cells are like a donation store and they will keep on taking your sugar donations until they are full. Several times I have loaded my car and wanted to drop off donations only to find a sign saying they are full and not accepting any more donations. Likewise, when your muscle cells collect saturated fat, they reduce their insulin receptors to signal that they no longer have storage capacity for sugar. The problem is actually much worse than just they're not open. Have you ever brought your car to get a simple oil change only to learn that you had a motor oil leak and it would cost you several hundred dollars to fix it? That happened to me with our first Toyota Sienna minivan and had to fix it because it was structural damage. Saturated fat causes structural damage to your muscles by poisoning your mitochondria. This is called lipotoxicity, and this can actually happen in your liver and your pancreas. And if you have the perfect storm of all three organs having this lipotoxicity, that is type 2 insulin-dependent diabetes. Of the three organs, the fatty liver is the first sign of lipotoxicity with elevated liver enzymes. And this progresses to scarring of the liver called fibrosis. And when it's so severe, where it's irreversible, that's called cirrhosis. And by the way, your body size doesn't tell me anything about your liver. You can be skinny or overweight and have a bad fatty liver. This is because there are many paths to getting a fatty liver that all involve your lifestyle and emotions. For example, you can have high stress hormones like cortisol from being anxious all the time, or you can take medications like steroids that mimic cortisol. But the most common and efficient way to get a fatty liver is to make you insulin resistant by infusing excess saturated fat and cholesterol. And this was first shown in rats to make them insulin resistant in 10 days by giving them lard and cholesterol straight into their veins. We can also do this in people too and watch their muscles get fatter. You can do this to yourself by overeating any calories and your body will convert those calories like refined sugars into saturated fats called triglycerides, which can also cause fatty liver. Most people think of fat as a macronutrient, but it's really a powerful signaling molecule. Fat in the wrong tissue causes the wrong signaling called inflammation. And whenever there is inflammation, the immune system is always involved, especially macrophages. In other videos, I've spoken about how macrophages, they're trying to help and remove cholesterol and other fats in the blood vessels. But macrophages are like oysters. They are great at collecting toxic trash in the environment and removing them, but they also have no way to dispose of that toxic trash. And as a result, they send out SOS signals called cytokines, which calls other immune cells. So the cavalry comes in and they just cause more inflammation as well as blood clotting. And this process is what drives 
atherosclerosis, which is simply a disease that chokes blood flow. Now, why do we even have macrophages? Well, macrophages are like your guard dog, and they are scattered all over your body, guarding every single organ from invaders like bacteria and cancer cells. A guard dog should be fit and only attack foreign invaders, but when it becomes rabid, it can actually bite the owner. And that's what happens with lipotoxicity. The liver macrophages are overwhelmed with poisons like saturated fats. The macrophages become rabid and turn on the liver, causing permanent scarring or fibrosis. So if you want to reverse your fatty liver, you have to find foods like blueberry that are high in fiber that reduce blood cholesterol and other bad lipids. That's why number three is to eat high fiber foods as fiber traps cholesterol in your gut it also traps saturated fat to prevent them from being absorbed. And it literally gets flushed down the toilet. And the goal is to get at least 30 grams daily, which gels together to form like a fishnet to trap the fats and other toxins that you eat. And also to trap the bile so that you don't reabsorb and recycle all these things. All of these help to reduce cholesterol fatty acids, and your fat in the liver. Now, when you eat whole food, it's not just fiber that can help reduce fatty liver, but also the polyphenols that are found in whole foods like number four, a drink billions of people consume every day with a polyphenol called chlorogenic acid that reduces inflammation in the liver. And if you drink coffee, that's where you can get the chlorogenic acid. However, avoid dairy milk and milk-based coffee creamers as a dairy protein casein will significantly reduce the chlorogenic acid level in that cup of coffee. I can't take the caffeine and that's why decaffeinated coffee would be my choice. And aiming for two cups a day is the ideal amount. Number five is another high fiber food that is also high in good quality protein. That doesn't make sense, huh? Because animal protein was thought of as the best quality protein. However, animal protein, they don't have any dietary fiber. Now, this is because the original way that people rank protein was how protein affected baby rats. Now, we're not rats. And now we know so many other issues come with eating foods that determine the quality of the food besides protein. And that includes saturated fats, heavy metals, and other toxins. And that's why I eat garbanzo beans every day. Beans have been shown to reduce insulin resistance by reducing blood sugar levels, reducing cholesterol, and reducing weight, which together reduces the fat in your liver. However, if you're a bodybuilder, you're probably looking for leucine-rich sources like those found in animal protein. But did you know that 100 grams of black beans has more leucine than pork, chicken, or lean steak? That's why number six, I eat black beans daily. Now, my favorite way to eat black beans is with cocoa powder. I blend five tablespoons of a high flavanol, low heavy metal cocoa powder with soy milk and add 10 de-seeded medjool dates. And then I add to that mixture flax seeds that have been ground up, about half a cup, and one can of drained rinse and mash black beans. And to that mixture, I fold in half a cup of walnuts with pumpkin seeds and raisins. And then I bake this whole mixture for 325 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how I spread this fiber-rich anti-inflammatory dough. In case you didn't know, all plants and animals have leucine, but animal meats in general have more leucine compared to food from the plant kingdom. But we know people can still bulk up going vegan as proven by many famous plant-based athletes who realize going plant-based actually gave them a great competitive performance edge. But for someone not exercising like an athlete, high leucine is not good because it increases insulin. Remember, every time insulin is secreted, your liver packs on more fat. And there is a silent epidemic of skinny fat people. They're called TOFI, thin on the outside, fat on the inside. I had that. Certain ethnicities like Asians classically look healthy on the outside because they're skinny, but they have deadly fat on the inside. And millions of people have TOFI and they don't even know it. This is why India and Asia can have high diabetes rates, but lower obesity rates in America. The more branch chain amino acids you eat, the higher the insulin and the higher your cholesterol. So unless you're actively building muscle like bodybuilders, people like me would just get fat with fattier livers eating leucine rich foods. And this is because of one simple rule. You can't store protein. Any excess protein that you don't use for the day is toxic and will be broken down to be stored as fat. 
And when you eat plants and starches, you are eating protein, even in junk foods like potato chips and breads. Nobody just eats one chip or one slice of bread. And then if you're eating animal-centered meals like meats and steaks and seafood, you're eating even more leucine-rich protein. Do you see how quickly your protein intake adds up? So how much protein do you need? Well, you can go and calculate it, but I've never done that to myself because the studies show we're all eating twice as much protein than we need if we eat enough to maintain our body weight. Hence, if you have problems losing weight, you can either fast, which is not sustainable, and destroys muscle, exercise more, which a lot of people don't like to do, or reduce your animal protein. Now, I don't like to spend my time fasting or exercising, and I don't like measuring my foods, and hence, as an easy hack, I stick to proteins in case in a natural fiber shell, plant proteins because it naturally protects my calories. And that's why beans are the perfect food to maintain healthy muscles and to prevent fatty livers. I make it a rule to eat some kind of bean daily. But like you, I too struggle with time management and hunger and often find myself impatient to wait for my beans to finish cooking. And that is why I eat tofu. Tofu is a processed soy bean, which have withstood the test of time as a longevity food because it's a staple in Asia for thousands of years. The thing is, tofu is lower in dietary fiber, but rich in unique phytonutrients called phytoestrogens that's only found in soybeans. And studies have shown that they help to protect the metabolism to improve liver inflammation. Now, oftentimes, I just eat tofu crumbled and sauteed with some garlic, red onions, maybe some carrots, maybe some other root like sweet potatoes. And this is all seasoned with onion powder, nutritional yeast, and miso. And then I top that with chopped green onions and cilantro, and then a generous sprinkle of sesame seeds. Number seven, this is a grain that has been shown in clinical studies to reduce liver inflammation and obesity. And you may be opposed to grains in your diet. That's fine, there's plenty of other foods to eat. But I'm just telling you, you are missing out on the nutrients that are found in grains. Now, you've seen labels on oatmeal as being heart healthy. It is also liver healthy. In one study, people who ate oatmeal twice a day for 12 weeks, less than a cup of oatmeal a day, decrease their liver enzymes, reduce their body fat composition, and cholesterol. I don't eat oatmeal for its starch. I eat it for these anti-inflammatory benefits, and that's why... I eat oat groats. But you may not be an oatmeal person. Choose another whole grain like sorghum or millet. Really any whole grain eaten as a whole food will help to reduce the fat in your liver as proven by this study with over 200 people. For 12 weeks, people switched half of their refined grains to whole grain. Unbelievably, these people volunteered for a liver biopsy to prove that whole grains can reverse fatty liver. Number eight is another natural plant full of fiber and anthocyanins that longevity cultures like Okinawans eat daily, and that is the purple sweet potato. Even the juice of the sweet potato full of anthocyanins has been shown to reduce liver inflammation. But imagine what would happen if you actually ate the whole sweet potato. You would get the benefits of the fiber and resistant starch that will feed your gut microbiome to further reduce inflammation. Number nine is an ancient food that my parents always made me drink whenever I was sick. It's actually a spice. And today, there's so many metabolic benefits from eating this spice that you can find commonly in your supermarket, and that is powdered ginger. Just a teaspoon of powdered ginger in a hot cup of water can suppress your appetite, elevate your metabolic rate, and reduce your liver fat. Number 10 is another affordable and popular condiment you can add to any food. If you have blood sugar problems, you should add it to all your food to tamper down those blood sugars and avoid those high insulin spikes. The first time I went to an Italian restaurant, they serve bread with the condiment balsamic vinegar, and I thought it was so fancy. Little did I know that Romans use vinegar as medicine. Vinegar is fermented from fruit sugars and it becomes concentrated acidic acid, which increases AMP kinase to curb your appetite, reduce your total cholesterol, improve blood sugar and insulin resistance, and increase your metabolism. All this reduces fat in your liver. Two teaspoons with every meal is a target. Even vinegars consumed at night can lower your blood sugars in the morning. As an added bonus, 
it can help reduce bacteria in your food. I would avoid drinking vinegar straight. It's not so good for your teeth nor your food pipe. Plus, you miss the opportunity to pair that vinegar with your food to reduce the addictive hormones like dopamine that come with eating comfort foods. I prefer balsamic vinegar because that sweet and sour taste adds a delicious flavor to savory dishes and helps my body fight inflammation to power my immunity. If you want to learn more about powerful foods, watch the next video.